the Tesla Cybertruck is about to blaze a trail into the electric vehicle world, setting a new standard for innovation and design. Powering this colossal stainless steel beast is none other than the groundbreaking Cybercell battery, a unique creation by Tesla. But does this battery have what it takes to meet the lofty expectations set by Elon Musk for the Cybertruck? Join us as we unravel the secrets behind the Tesla Cybercell battery and see if it's truly the game changer it promises to be. Let's break it down and dive deep into the world of the Tesla Cybercell. First things first, it's a twist on Tesla's existing 4680 cell design. Now, the name may sound a bit technical, but essentially, it's named after its dimensions, 46 mm in diameter by 80 mm in length. However, here's the catch. Just knowing the size doesn't tell us much about how well it performs. You see, it's what's inside that counts. The 4680 is a lithium ion battery with a mix of nickel, cobalt, and manganese for the cathode materials and graphite for the anode. This is different from the 4680 Elon Musk initially presented, which had no cobalt in the cathode and used both graphite and silicon for the anode. Now, this particular Gen 1 4680 has only seen limited use in a special version of the Tesla Model Y, produced in Giga, Texas, which is no longer available. But we got our hands on enough of them to figure out their performance. A smart user, Troy Teslike, has done some number crunching. He found that each 4680 cell weighs about 355 grams and can store 81.2 watt hours of energy. With these numbers, he calculated the energy density of the Gen 1 4680 to be 229 watt hours per kilogram. This energy density is a crucial measurement of a battery's potential. Now, let's put this into perspective. The more common Panasonic made 2170 cells in the Model Y long range have an energy density of 262 watt hours per kilogram. So, the new 4680 cells have about 133% less energy density than these Panasonic cells. We've also heard reports from early adopters of 4680 powered Model Ys that these new cars tend to charge more slowly than regular Model Ys. The 4680 battery packs don't draw the full 250 kilowatt power from the V3 supercharger stalls. Instead, they quickly throttle down the charging power to a lower level compared to the 2170 equipped packs. Now, charging speed can be influenced by many factors, and it's likely more related to software than hardware. In the end, these results aren't a home run, but they're not a total bust either. We're comparing a brand new battery design from a relatively new battery maker with a well-established design from a top-tier Japanese electronics manufacturer. So, what does all of this mean for the Cybertruck? Well, if Tesla uses the existing 4680 cells to power the Cybertruck, it might not reach the impressive performance figures originally promised. Over 300 miles of range with a dual-motor setup and over 500 miles with the tri-motor version the Gen 1 4680 cells are simply too large and heavy to fit the required energy into the Cybertruck chassis to achieve those numbers. Earlier this year, Drew Baglino, Tesla's SVP of powertrain and energy engineering, brought a glimmer of hope for the Cybertruck. He informed Tesla investors that they were preparing to launch the Cybertruck cell in Texas. This new Cybercell boasts a 10% higher energy density compared to their current production cells. This enhancement was achieved through a combination of process and mechanical design optimizations. While this may sound like good news, it's also a bit puzzling. The deal is that even with this 10% boost, the Cybercell still falls short in performance compared to the existing 2170 cells. Now, let's get back to our friend Troy Teslike's math chart. With the 10% increase, the Cybercell is expected to carry around 89.4 watt-hours of energy per cell, assuming the weight remains similar. This would give us a projected energy density of 252 watt hours per kilogram. Now let's bring these figures to life with real world scenarios. If the Cybertruck were equipped with a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack, which is the same capacity as the Model X, it would likely yield a range of around 250 miles. This range might be sufficient for many daily driving needs, but the Cybertruck is designed for much more than that. In order to achieve a range of 325 miles, which is consistent with Tesla's other vehicles like the Model 3 and Model Y, the Cybertruck might require a battery pack of approximately 130 kilowatt hours. This estimate is, of course, based on the assumption that the Cybertruck's drag coefficient remains similar to Tesla's existing models. 
If the Cybertruck is less aerodynamic, the required battery size could be even larger to maintain acceptable performance. Now, here's where things get interesting. To truly meet the advertised range of over 300 miles for the dual motor variant of the Cybertruck, the Cybercell might necessitate a larger battery pack, possibly in the ballpark of 160 kilowatt hours. Scaling up to the ambitious claim of over 500 miles of range for the top tier Cybertruck model could potentially result in a battery size that's just too massive to fit comfortably within the truck's chassis. This presents a significant challenge. This is not a gloomy outcome by any means, but it does underscore the need for substantial battery capacity in the Cybertruck. When we consider the truck's intended use cases, including towing, off-roading, and other demanding activities, a substantial range becomes a baseline requirement for the vehicle to perform effectively. For comparison, let's look at a typical electric vehicle, where range is often less critical due to the convenience of recharging. However, the Cybertruck isn't a typical vehicle. It's specifically designed for rugged tasks and adventures, so a robust range is essential. The Gen 2 Cybercell is an intriguing prospect. To fully understand its potential, we need to go back to Drew Baglino's announcement and his statement that the 10% increase in energy density was achieved through process and mechanical design optimization. Let's dissect what this means. By examining a diagram from a Tesla patent application, which compares the construction of battery cell terminals, we can draw some informed conclusions. If we assume that the left side represents the Gen 4680 and the right side the Gen 2 Cybercell, we can observe that the Gen 2 design features a more compact battery terminal. What all this suggests is that Tesla is far from reaching the limits of their new battery cell format. They're likely only scratching the surface of its potential. The evidence lies in a recent post from Tesla that celebrates the production of the 20 millionth 4680 cell at Giga, Texas. What's remarkable here is that this production milestone pertains specifically to the Cybercell variation of the battery. So what can we infer from this? Well, 4680 production at Giga, Texas commenced early this year, and by June 16th, Tesla announced the production of the 10 millionth cell. From January to June, it took approximately six months to manufacture the first 10 million batteries. However, it only took another four months, from June to October, to build the second 10 million batteries. This is indicative of an increase in production volume over time. With this trend in mind, it's plausible that Tesla might achieve the production of the 30 millionth cell by the end of this year. According to Troy's calculations, Tesla averaged around 85,300 cells per day between June and October, this is quite a lot of batteries, but in the grand scheme of electric vehicle manufacturing, it's not an exceptionally high yield. Now let's return to our earlier assumptions about the size of the Cybertruck's battery pack. If we consider the lower end of the production estimate, 450 Cybertrucks per week, that's around 34,000 trucks per year, which would take many years to fulfill all existing Cybertruck pre-orders. What can we conclude from all this? Things seem to be progressing well for Cybertruck production at Giga, Texas, and Tesla appears on track to deliver the mid-tier Cybertruck promised years ago. Furthermore, there's still considerable room for improvement, both in terms of battery design and production scalability. Tesla remains well poised to meet even the loftiest expectations for the Cybertruck, but it's a journey that will require time and continued effort. Fortunately, this is a company renowned for tackling challenging endeavors, and the future appears promising. So what are your thoughts about the new Tesla Cybercell battery? Share with us in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, show us some love by hitting that like button and leaving a comment down below. Also, if you're a fan of all things technology, be sure to check out this other video we've got lined up for you. It's packed with all the latest news, tips, and tricks to keep you ahead of the curve.